everyone, in this video, I would like to briefly concern myself, or I should say, we will briefly concern ourselves with the topic of the charade pertaining to Russia's supposed collapse after their special military operation, as they call it, in Ukraine. So after Russia went into Ukraine, as we all are undoubtedly aware of at this point, uh, the West, of course, led by the United States, put a vast array of sanctions against the Russian economy, uh, Russian oligarchs, as they called, and of course, many other different people, things, and entities. And as a result of it, they have come out um, very um, adamantly stating um, that, you know, Russia is over, the regime is done for, Joe Biden saying things like the rest of the world is united against Russia, couldn't be anything further than true. We've debunked that a million times, saying that uh, their days are over with and all the rest of it. But what I think is important to do right now as we get such a a very uh, distorted view of reality and what's actually going on, I, th I found the video um, that I think is actually a pretty good uh, dis uh, description of showing us what's the reality of actually what's going on on the ground in Russia. Please take a look. We've all seen the sensationalist headlines. Moscow has ground to a halt and completely shut down. Life in Russia will never be the same again. And the country has once more retreated behind the Iron Curtain. Well, I'm here in the capital and with the opportunity to show you what life is really like here on the ground. And a spoiler, it's very different from the so-called Iron Curtain portrayed in the Western media. First of all, no, we are not hit by some kind of social media blackout, cut off from the outside world. A good VPN gets you everything you need. I'm even up to speed with the latest goings on in Albert Square. After February the 24th, the news came flooding in about shops and businesses leaving the country in some kind of mass exodus. If you believe the headlines, there were no shops left in Russia at all. But that's not quite true. Many of those that did leave did so at great cost. But more than 1,000 foreign companies are still doing business here in Russia. Starbucks has simply rebranded itself as Stars. And McDonald's has a new owner and a new name. But it's pretty much the same and we're still loving it. We spoke to people on the streets and asked them if they'd noticed any differences. There are many local brands that are no worse than the foreign ones. We found a replacement for them. We started to support Russian brands that maintain quality. Coca-Cola is gone, but we have a replacement. The local brand, Dobry Cola. A lot of beverages, good ones, have appeared since Coca-Cola left Russia. And I almost see no difference without McDonald's either. I don't expect that brand to return, and I think the Russian version, Tasty Full Stop, is quite delicious. We managed to partially substitute for the brands that left. For furniture, for example, IKEA, we've replaced a portion of their products. It would be silly to deny the impact of sanctions on the Russian economy. Of course, things aren't quite as they were before the special military operation. But at the same time, it's not quite as the West hoped as it ramped up the pressure. Remember Biden? As a result of these unprecedented sanctions, the ruble almost is immediately reduced to rubble. Well, soon after the military operation began, the ruble did indeed tank 30% to the dollar, hitting record lows. But the situation has stabilised. It's now 65 to 70 rubles to the US dollar, meaning that Russia's currency is now stronger than it was before the military operations began. In fact, according to Bloomberg, the ruble is the best performing currency in the world this year. But now, as the situation has stabilised, so has the West's realisation that it's overplayed its hand. Take The Economist, for example. Back in February, it was reporting doom and gloom that the collapse of the ruble was continuing and compounding the isolation of Russia. Yet just months later, in August, it was asking the question, how does the ruble continue to defy expectations? Well, maybe the answer is a simple one. Perhaps those expectations shouldn't have been lowered in the first place. That's not to say that there's no awareness of what's going on in the conflict zone. It's a topic that's not just discussed daily, but also exists in the public sphere. Across the city, 
you'll see billboards adorned with the Z logo. Posters like this one, declaring glory to Russian heroes. Different pictures, different faces of different soldiers of all ranks. A QR code, how to find out more information. Plus, there are serious discussions about how best to support those on the front line. This new year will look different for many Russians. A lot of towns and cities have scrapped their celebrations altogether. Here in Moscow, a compromise was reached. A citywide vote was held. The outcome? Well, a toned down celebration without fireworks. But the mayor says that it's important to keep those traditions alive. Today, when thousands of men, husbands, fathers and sons are fighting for the independence of our motherland, when blood is being shed, when hundreds of thousands of civilians are suffering, we also face a choice. In the name of the economy, in the name of compassion, to abandon these holidays. Or, despite the tragic circumstances, to still remain human. People who adhere to their national traditions do not lose their spirit. They do not get discouraged. They believe in victory, not with tears, but with deeds. They support those who are on the front line today. So yes, there have been some hiccups along the way. And for many, life will never be the same in Russia again. But Russia's total isolation and its collapse, as predicted by the West, has seemingly failed to materialize. So there you have it. I think that was a pretty good video as it pertains to describing the current Russian situation. As the man explained there, of course, there have been hiccups. Of course, things aren't 100% uh, perfect, but not, not perfect anywhere. But pertaining to their situation, it's much better than the Western leaders would have us think that it is. And in some cases, some may say many, many cases, they've, they're outright admitting that the sanctions and that their methods in order to cripple the Russian economy and Vladimir Putin's regime has outright failed and that the war in Ukraine is not going the way that America and the West have wanted it to go. And it won't end with their desired result. Now, of course, I already know um, upon seeing where this reporting is coming from, people will immediately castigate it as, um, you know, uh, unworthy. It's, it's not legitimate. Um, we can't, you know, it's, it's stupid because of the source. Of course, this is uh, a Russian uh, media outlet. Uh, this is RT. They were banned uh, off of YouTube um, and other social media sites when they were doing their, um, of course, vast banning when the uh, operation, once again, as they refer to it as, first took place. And, um, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that people will say no to things like this, but then they will go all in on uh, things like CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or the like. When we've seen how um, horrible they can be, there's another word that I would like to throw out, but it's not coming to my mind. So we'll just stick with that one because that's the best that I can provide at the moment. But how ridiculously ineffective that that's a bit better they are when it comes to providing the american mind or psyche with relevant information but with that being said um i don't want to uh talk too much because there's not really a whole lot to say um you basically got the crux of the message that i would like to convey with that video and i can just sum it up uh summarize it by saying this things are definitely not going the way that our leaders would have us think that they are.